So good morning or good afternoon to everyone. Uh, thank you for taking the time to join us. Uh, hopefully you're here to talk about automatic tank gauging. So as we start, I just want to give a little background about MTS. Uh, so MTS, originally the company was a company called Temposonics. Uh, the company pioneered looking for and using magnetostrictive technology to do sensor measurement, uh, either a position measurement or a liquid level measurement. The company was purchased by MTS Systems, and when they purchased the company, they moved it from Long Island, New York, uh, down to Cary, North Carolina, uh, which pays off right now, this time of year, because it's at least a little bit warmer here and uh, not the big snowstorm that they had up in New York. And then we also have a sister office in Germany. Uh, originally, it was our distributor, and then we purchased them, and they became part of the company. And we have the two offices, North Carolina and Germany, which are full production facilities, R&D, uh, everything all together. We are the world leader uh, in sensors as far as magnetic restriction, using them for automatic tank gauging, for hydraulic cylinder feedback, so placing them inside of a hydraulic cylinder, uh, and also for all kinds of machine applications. Uh, in 2016, uh, MTS Systems Corporation, so our parent company, uh, acquired PCB, and then PCB and the historical MTS sensors merged together as our sensors division. Uh, and we all have the, the same or different kinds of sensors, but all going out to helping providing uh, feedback and instrumentation. Uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, so I have a bachelor's in electrical engineering from NC State, and I enjoyed going there so much. I stuck around and went ahead and got a uh, Master's of Business Administration while I was there. Uh, I had been working at MTS for about 15 years, uh, holding several different marketing roles. Uh, and right now I have this wonderfully long title that nobody understands, a Global Market Segment Leader for Liquid Level. Uh, basically it just means that for any kind of technical problems or technical questions for our liquid level sensors, they all come to me. I uh, participate in the American Petroleum Institute, API, uh, for the chapters 3.1b, which is for automatic tank gauging of above ground storage tanks, and also 18.2, which is looking at tank gauging for oil lease tanks. And these would be the tanks out of the wellheads uh, where you're pumping the, the oil directly out of the ground into those tanks. I've participated in the International School of Hydrocarbon Measurement for the past six years. Uh, as an instructor and giving a class to talk about using magnetic restricted technology for level measurement. Uh, and just a couple little interesting facts. Uh, I've driven the same Jeep Wrangler for over 23 years now, uh, and it, it drives like it's 23 years old. Uh, and I have been to 20 different countries while working for MTS, uh, helping build the business and visiting customers around the world. Within MTS sensors, we have three uh, different product groups. Uh, these all use the same magnetostrictive technology. We just package it up a little bit different as far as the electronics and the mechanics to fit the different applications. So we have what we call our industrial sensors. These are going out on all kinds of machines, uh, doing the, the machine automation and uh, helping with uh, movement of hydraulic systems, uh, so you can think of presses. Uh, we have our mobile hydraulic group. Uh, this is very similar to our industrial line, except for the mobile hydraulic group. It's specifically designed to go internal to a hydraulic cylinder. Uh, these applications are uh, in different parts where you don't want an exposed electronic, uh, so embedding it inside the cylinder provides a more secure, more safe uh, position feedback measurement. Uh, so this would be construction, agriculture, uh, waste management, uh, all kinds of different applications there. Uh, and then we take the same technology, we use it for level measurement. Uh, so here we're going to put it inside a different kind of packaging, uh, typically much longer sensors. And we're also going to be using a float, and that's going to be able to tell us exactly how much liquid is in a tank. So a lot of times the concern is, well, why, why, why do I need to do tank gauging? What, you know, what's the benefits of it? And when we're discussing this with customers, a lot of times 
that customers come up and they, they have the same kinds of questions. Uh, a lot of times we get asked about, do you have to take the tank down? Do you have to take it out of service? Uh, and this differs based upon what technology you're using. Uh, different technologies, you have to take the tank out of service. You have to make sure the installations are done a certain way. Uh, you may have to add uh, you know, secondary equipment or a different kind of mounting to the tank. Uh, so this is something to make sure you pay attention to when you're trying to select a uh, level measurement. Uh, for us, we don't have to uh, be installed when the tank is out of service. The only exception, and this would be for all equipment, would be for a pressurized tank. In that case, the tank does have to be taken down and depressurized. Uh, we get asked about accuracy. All the customers ask, you know, is it accurate? And, and this varies depending on what your definition of accuracy is. Uh, we have some customers that are looking, you know, accuracy is plus minus a couple inches. Uh, we have other customers when they're talking about accuracy, they're talking about, you know, a sixteenth of an inch. Uh, so it just depends on what you're looking for. Uh, for MTS, we're on the, the high accuracy side of level measurement. Uh, our inherent accuracy is plus minus one millimeter, so we're going to be right up there at the top. Uh, question about maintenance. Do I have to send it back to get it fixed? A lot of customers run into an issue where they need the tank back up and running as quickly as possible. So removing a sensor, cleaning it, shipping it, uh, all those things cause problems. Uh, fortunately for the MTS design, uh, we are completely field repairable, so we can ship the replacement components to the customer and it can be repaired or replaced on site depending on what it was. Uh, get questions around calibration. How often do I have to calibrate it? How difficult is it to calibrate it? Uh, so this is something you need to make sure you talk to the vendor or the, the manufacturer about. Uh, for some technologies, the tank has to move to multiple levels. And if you have a very small tank, this could be easy. Uh, but if you have a very large bulk storage tank, uh, moving the tank from you know top to empty can, one, take a full day, or for some of these tanks, can take two days. And then the second part of that is the cost, uh, running the pumps and everything, moving that much liquid, uh, it, it just takes a lot of time and effort, and, and it's all related to, you know, to the money that it costs. Uh, so for the MTS unit, we can do a single point calibration. Uh, so if you take a hand measurement or a manual measurement, uh, you can just tell the sensor that you want the output, the, the current level, to be whatever it is, and then the sensor will be fully calibrated. Uh, the other question we get, around is the lengths, how, how short, how long, the different mechanics to making sure it can fit inside the tank. So our, our lengths range from as short as 12 inches uh, all the way up to 866 inches, which is a little bit more than 72 feet, uh, right around 22 meters. And when we get into the details of the applications, we usually have more questions. Uh, foam is usually one of the big issues that customers inquire about. Uh, different processes within the chemical and pharmaceutical industry and also wastewater, uh, as they run the processes, they're generating foam. And different technologies either work with foam or they can get interference. Uh, and especially if the foam is not uh, constant, if you have the foam coming in and out of the application, that can cause a lot of problems. Uh, with the MTS level transmitters, we are a float-based system, so the float will sink through the foam and it will sit on the liquid and we won't have any kind of interference. Uh, mixers, a lot of tanks, uh, again, chemicals, pharmaceuticals, uh, where they're trying to get different reactions, they have mixers in the tanks. Uh, and depending on the technology and how robust the design is, uh, some of them produce and, and work very well with mixers, others have issues. Uh, we've replaced a lot of sensors that uh, the sensors are usually much cheaper, uh, but that's because they use an inferior pipe, a very thin pipe or a very thin walled pipe. Uh, and when you put it inside of a tank with a mixer, the pipe no longer is able to hold its strength and the pipe will start moving around, giving you false measurements. And if you're trying to hold uh, high accuracy or you know, even decent accuracy, uh, that kind of movement will, will just ruin everything. Uh, the need for a stilling well. Uh, so if you're not familiar with this term, a, a stilling well is 
basically a, a large pipe that goes from the top to the bottom of the tank that has either slots or holes drilled in it. And the purpose is to keep the level inside of it uh, still. Uh, the calmer the liquid, the more accurate the level measurement is going to be. Uh, so some technologies require this. Uh, the technology can't work without it. Uh, for the MTS unit, we do not have to have a stilling well. Uh, if you have one existing, that's wonderful. We'd love to use it. Uh, but we're not going to require one to be put in and add to that expense of automating the tank. Uh, other one we constantly get asked about is do we measure asphalt? Uh, so asphalt is actually a liquid before it's put down on the roads. Uh, however, it is a very viscous, sticky, hot uh, liquid and it's something where we would not go into that application. Uh, since we are a float-based measurement, we want to make sure that we're going into applications and being used on those applications are going to work correctly. Uh, so recapping some of this, when you're looking to find a level transmitter, uh, you want to make sure that it offers certain features. Uh, so we would recommend looking for one that is field replaceable. Uh, that way you don't have the expense of shipping stuff back and forth to factories. Uh, offer single point calibration. This way you can easily calibrate your tanks. Uh, it doesn't require recalibration. Uh, some of the technologies out there are manual, uh, so the, the parts wear out and they have to be recalibrated on a regular basis. Uh, with the MTS technology, the magnet restrictive technology, there is no requirement for recalibration. Uh, ease of installation. Uh, when you get into the details of the different technologies, how they mount on the tank and how far away they have to be from the tank wall or from stairs or uh, from all the other internals of the tank uh, becomes very complicated. Uh, for the MTS unit, it's, it's very simple. Uh, we just need an opening on the top of the tank, and for whatever size the float is, uh, we'll say even for the bigger floats, nothing more than four inches. Uh, as long as we have clearance of four inches from the top to bottom, uh, we'll mount, we'll work, and we don't have to worry about if, if we're too close to anything. As long as the float freely moves, we'll work. Uh, the other one is bench top testing. Uh, so with being a float-based technology, uh, the floats are going to be on the pipe or the flexible hose. And so if you want to make sure everything's working before you put it in a tank or if you're doing troubleshooting, uh, you can lay it out. Uh, you can move the floats and you'll see the level move based off the float position and the float movement. And it's really easy to, to make sure everything's working before you put it into the tank. So for the tank gauging for MTS, as I mentioned earlier, we're one technology. We're magnet restrictive technology. Uh, we've been doing this for over 40 years now. Uh, we've been installed in, in thousands and thousands of tanks and applications. Uh, with our instrument, we can provide a single level. So let's say a product level, we can provide an interface. The interface would be when you have two liquids determining the height of the second liquid. We can provide multiple levels, so we can do both of those, the product level and the interface level at the same time. We can provide temperature, and this can be either just a single point temperature, or this can be multiple temperatures and providing an average of those that are in the liquid. Uh, we also do volume calculations, and we'll go into some of this stuff a little bit more in a couple slides. Uh, we have all kinds of ratings, so we have different hazardous area ratings for uh, the requirements around the world. We have a sill capable output, we have 3A for the food and beverage or the pharmaceutical industry, and we also have CE for anything that's being exported to Europe. So with the, the Level Plus transmitters, uh, or really for any transmitter, you want to take a look at two big things. Uh, you want to look at the installed cost and you want to look at the lifetime cost. So the installed cost is not just the cost of the sensor itself, but also the cost of installing it into the tank uh, and any of the extra equipment that you need to get the signal from the tank back to the control room. Uh, so this would include the cabling, the conduit, uh, any kind of extra equipment such as heaters or protocol converters. Uh, we've talked to a lot of customers and uh, usually when they come back to us, they'll, they'll tell us that they've had quotes and the cost of the sensors are all fairly within the same realm when you're looking at the same quality of sensors, uh, but the installation costs, they vary. And depending on what equipment you choose, uh, 
we've had customers tell us that our equipment for the full install cost uh, was less by, for some, uh, say three, four thousand dollars, and we've had others tell us that uh, they were able to save over ten thousand dollars a tank uh, specifically by using us instead of one of the competitors. Uh, so it's, it's definitely something you want to take a look at when you're doing an installation. Uh, the other part would be the lifetime cost. Uh, how much is it going to cost to use and repair this sensor over its lifetime? Uh, so if you're familiar with an MTBF calculation, this is mean time between failure, uh, we calculated a 123-year life. Uh, anything above an 80 is usually considered a reliable equipment. Uh, so we're definitely above an 80, and it should be a good piece of equipment to last a long time. Uh, it doesn't actually mean that it'll be 123 years between failures. Uh, there's too many other variables, and you know, no one no one expects to get that kind of life out of it. Uh, so the other part would be that there's no scheduled maintenance. You don't have to take the tank out of service. You don't have to pull the instrument from the tank. Uh, there's no need for recalibration, so you don't have uh, either manpower or equipment going out to the tank to constantly calibrate. And as mentioned earlier, it's field replaceable, so you don't have any downtime, you don't have added shipping costs, everything can just go right to the tank and be repaired with it uh, still installed inside the tank. Some of the industries that we serve, uh, so the first slide is kind of the main industries where we have most of our business. Uh, so this is the oil and gas industry. Uh, an offshoot of that would be the LPG. Uh, so this is your propanes and your butanes. We also have chemical, mining, and then we get into the cleaner places, the food and beverage, and the pharmaceutical. Uh, here's some more applications or, or industries for us. These we're still finding more and more business in. Uh, medical devices, marine industry, uh, hydraulic reservoir units, uh, printing, these are large scale printers, uh, agriculture, and then water and wastewater. For many restrictive technology, uh, it's a unique technology and most people either haven't heard of it or definitely don't understand what it is. Uh, so we put together this little video to help illustrate exactly what's going on with the technology. So you can see the external mechanics. We have our blue housing, we have a metal pipe, and then we have a float, and inside the float is a permanent magnet. Now inside of the pipe is our waveguide. So this is a special magnetostrictive material. And when we interrogate it with an electric pulse, so that's the little red pulse there at the beginning, two things happen to this material. One, it generates a magnetic field radially around the material. And two, the material tries to twist. Now when this occurs and the permanent magnet is there, as it tries to twist, it actually generates a return signal, a physical movement in the material that comes back up to the housing and we do a time of flight measurement from when we hit it with the initial electric pulse to when we get this physical movement coming back. Uh, this is a very accurate technology. It's easily repeatable. It's non-destructive, so we're not wearing out. We don't have any loss of signal. Uh, that's why we don't need a recalibration. And we can also put more floats, more magnets on there to get more positions. Uh, so on the liquid level side of the business, the most that we've done has been three floats. That'd be three liquids in a tank. Uh, however, on the other side of our business, on the industrial side of our business, uh, where we use this for position measurement, we've put these on paper slitters, and we've had up to 30 different positions, 30 different magnets uh, on the same sensor. So it has different applications looking across different industries. So we'll take a look at some of the solutions, some of the features here. Uh, so across all the different product lines from MTS, uh, we have a range of level sensors. We have some that are embeddable, so these are very small. As I mentioned, the medical equipment before, uh, we can embed these inside of medical equipment. Uh, flexible for the long tanks, we're going to use a flexible hose. Uh, we can transition, uh, just depends on the customer's uh, desire, the, the specific application, and any kind of safety constraints about changing from a rigid pipe to a flexible hose. Uh, for us, the hard cutoff is 25 feet. 
Uh, anything past 25 feet is going to be flexible, uh, but most of the time we see that the customers and users uh, are changing over some are usually about 15 feet. Uh, past this, it's just too cumbersome to try to handle rigid pipes. Uh, we do multiple levels, as I mentioned before. Uh, the gross and net volume, so gross is the physical volume in the tank, and net would be the temperature corrected volume uh, to remove fluctuations due to temperature. Uh, we have Ethernet outputs. We have our sanitary pipe for use in the pharmaceutical and in the food and beverage industries. Uh, we have integral temp temperature measurement. So within the same sensor, you can get both the level and the temperature. And then we have several different hazardous area approvals. A uh, quick look at the different outputs. So we have lots of uh, serial outputs, Ethernet outputs, uh, and then we've had the historical standard analog and the digital outputs. Uh, so for most of these, some of these are within the process industries. Uh, that would be, say, the Modbus and the Hard. Uh, others are from the machine industries, so it's especially as you look at the Ethernet-based outputs. Uh, so we have a nice uh, selection of all kinds of different outputs going across the different industries. And as they continue to develop new outputs, we continue to develop them uh, within our sensors and release them to the market. Now, specifically, we're going to take a look at uh, what we call our Level Plus product line. Uh, these are specifically made for level measurement. Uh, so we have five different sensors here. We have our tank slayer. So this is going after the large tanks. This has our flexible hose. We have our Refine Me which is our standard industrial pipe, looking at refineries, chemical plants, or any kind of basic process industry application. We have SoClean, and this is looking for sanitary applications. So we have a sanitary pipe, flow, tri-clamps, and plugs, uh, all the different things for going into those clean environments. We have our chambered unit, and the chambered unit is mounted on a, to a magnetic level gauge. And we have our newest one, which is our level limit. So this is incorporating a high level switch with a liquid level transmitter. So uh, basically taking either the tank slayer or the refine me and then adding a uh, secondary set of electronics and another float uh, to be able to provide a high level uh, cutoff switch. Now we'll take a look at the video showing the, the level limit, uh, also just showing the basic applications for measurement. So typically if there's two liquids, we will have two floats. Uh, one is measuring the, the top floats, measuring the product level. Uh, the secondary float is measuring the interface, so a good one is oil and water. And then for the level limit, we have the third float, so that if anything happens within the tank and the tank starts to overfill, it would go up, it would trigger the third float, and that would then switch the alarm on. Uh, so for this, this is a separated high-level switch. So we're sharing the same mechanics, but electrically we're completely separate. Uh, so for different applications and different requirements, it is a nice way of offering uh, both a level measurement and also a high-level switch. So the key features here is what we were just talking about, having that five-in-one measurement, being able to offer a product level, an interface level, temperature volumes, both gross and net, and the overfill protection of that high-level switch. Uh, being able to offer all of this from one package, from one installation point in the tank is key, especially for existing tanks. Uh, the cost of having to go in and add another opening to a tank is can be very much and can really outweigh the benefits of being able to add additional instrumentation. So having all this in a singular package, uh, it's very attractive if you already have your tank existing and you only have the one opening to work out of. Uh, and then the other part we talked about is the accuracy. Uh, we meet the API standard for custody transfer, and this is having an inherent accuracy of plus minus one millimeter or one sixteenth. And again, these are circling around to the same benefits we talked about earlier. So this gives you a lower installed cost by having all that instrumentation coming from one singular package. 
and it gives you a lower lifetime cost for the benefits we talked about of not having to do the calibration and the maintenance. So we'll go into a little bit more information about the volume calculation. Uh, so within the sensor, we have a uh, what we call the LP dashboard. This is our software. It's available for free. And this allows you to connect to the sensor and set up the volume measurement. Uh, if you have a sphere, you can go ahead and you can enter the radius and the offset, and it'll do all the calculations for you. Uh, if you have a, say, cylindrical tank, what you can do is you'll go in and you'll enter the strap table or the capacity table. Uh, you can enter up to 200 points. Uh, you do that through the software, and then we'll be able to do all your volume calculations. Uh, with the temperature compensation, we have the API tables built in for 6A, 6B, and 6C. Uh, and then if you're using some kind of specialty material or specialty chemical, uh, we have the ability to enter a 50-point volume correction table. And this will allow us to do the, temp the temperature correction for the volume. That's shown in our software. It can also be pulled out over the, the interface. Uh, and then we have another little video here trying to illustrate the volumes. Uh, so we have the GODI, and this is the volume of the interface, so this would be everything that's below the interface flow. We have the GOVP, and this is going to be everything for the product between the product float and the interface flow. Uh, we have the total, which is simply the product level and the interface level together. Uh, and then we have the eulage or the ullage, this is the GOVU, and this is telling you how much free space that you have in the tank uh, based off the working capacity that you've entered into the electronics. Uh, so this way you know how much is physically in the tank, you know how much more you can put in the tank, and then we're also doing the NSBP, the net volume calculations, uh, so you can maintain your inventory records and not worry about changes from the temperature. Now we'll start talking about some of the applications. Uh, when we look into an application, we have a basic uh, set of information that we need to know. Uh, this will help us determine the correct sensor. This will help with determining the correct float and to make sure that the instrumentation will work in the tank. A lot of times we get asked, well, why, why should I choose MTS? Why should MTS win the business? Uh, and these are the, the main points that we talk to customers about, the install cost advantage. If you need to measure multiple levels and temperatures, uh, Using a sensor that has everything together is a very cost effective, keeps you from having all the added cost, extra cables and extra equipment. Uh, if you need accuracy, uh, we're gonna be on the top level and provide you the best accuracy, uh, not only off of a data sheet, but actually installed accuracy in the tank. Uh, regulatory compliance. If you need the hazardous area approvals, if you need a SIL sensor, uh, if you need the specialty pipes for the sanitary industry, we offer all those. Uh, interface measurement. If you're looking to measure an interface, uh, float-based technology is going to be the best way of measuring it. Uh, the other technologies out there still struggle with doing an interface measurement. Uh, they start off okay, but then they start losing accuracy. Uh, even as they start, most of them, the accuracy for the interface measurement is not the same as the product measurement. Uh, whereas from MTS, our accuracy doesn't change between the two levels. And the other thing is going to be the measurement through foam. Our floats are going to go right through the foam and sit on the liquid and provide a high accurate uh, measurement. So for some of the applications, uh, one of the biggest applications for us is bulk storage. Uh, so these are the typically large white tanks. Um, and these can range anywhere from uh, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 feet high. Uh, as it becomes harder and harder to get more real estate for these, we've seen the tank heights keep increasing and going up and up. Uh, these are typically used for bulk storage or refined fuels, uh, your gasolines, your ethanols. Uh, and from our standpoint, the reason why we, we get chosen for these applications is going to be the accuracy. Uh, holding accuracy over these longer lengths is, is much more difficult than the shorter tanks. Uh, the tank doesn't have to come out of service to do the installation. Uh, there's no modifications needed. So as we talked about not needing to have a stilling well and being able to mount in almost any tank, uh, those are very key. 
having the ability to do the, the two different levels and the temperature. Uh, the temperature allows for the temperature corrected volume, so inventory can be done correctly. Uh, having the two floats, the secondary float allows for water detection. Uh, that's generally what it's used for in this application to make sure that there's no water entering these tanks. Uh, we don't want contamination of the fuels with water. Uh, next application would be additive tanks. Uh, for the most part, all the fuel that comes from the refineries is the same. You have the different grades. Uh, but the fuels that you find at the different gas stations are basically the same. Uh, some of them do use different additives. Uh, so when you see the TV commercials and they're talking about uh, uh, shell nitrogen enriched gasoline and BP with Invigorate and uh, forget the other one that has the seven cleaners, uh, they're all putting different uh, additives into the gasoline. Uh, so we do those additive tanks. These are typically smaller tanks, but since they're also at the same tank farm, being able to have the same instrumentation installed in the big tanks, the little tanks, and tying it all together in the same system uh, is a big advantage for these guys. Uh, having the level and temperature, the volumes, and again, putting these in while the tanks are in service are all key features to help keep costs down. Another application is mercaptan injection. Uh, so here, mercaptan is that rotten egg smell that's put into natural gas. So having a, a very accurate measurement system is key. Uh, you don't want to be on the low side and not have enough of the odorant into the natural gas and not be able to detect a leak. And you also don't want to put too much in it where you're, you're flooding the natural gas and you're, you're smelling the mercaptan, the odorant, uh, even though there's not a leak. Another application is going to be distilleries. Uh, you may see on TV where they're talking about all the, the single barrel and the double barrels and, and all those things. That's true for some of the uh, distilleries, but for a lot of the distilleries and depending on exactly which, uh, uh, which beverage it is, uh, some of them are made in bulk and they're stored in very large tanks. So we can go in and provide a accurate measurement of the, the alcohols. Uh, and allows them to keep very good inventory records. And at least in the U.S., they're very concerned with inventory because they're taxed based off of production, uh, not based off of sales. And for our sensors, we're stainless steel, so it goes in and it doesn't uh, have any plastic parts or any kind of contamination that can get into the tank. Uh, it's been a very good application. Uh, lake monitoring is another one. Uh, so here they're monitoring the level of the lake uh, near the dams. Uh, when you're doing a hydroelectric dam, you want to make sure that you have all the water uh, to be able to go through and keep the power going. So customers here have been looking for uh, very long sensors so they can measure the lake levels over as much of a range as they can. Uh, now this is typically in an open environment, so there's no stilling well. Uh, there's not really much protection around the sensor. So having a robust sensor that can just go into the lake, be mounted and held at the top, uh, and then allow for accurate measurement is, is very key. Uh, another application is sump tanks. Uh, so these are typically just a runoff tank. So underneath the trucks as they're fueling up, uh, they catch anything that would spill. So this could be different fuels. Uh, this could be anything leaking from the trucks, say antifreeze. Um, or rainwater, you know, whatever's coming in, and it all goes back to a single tank. And then the tank is taken off, and the, uh, the fuels and everything are, are dealt with, so everything's environmentally safe. Uh, now, with the different mixtures in there, the, uh, certain technologies aren't going to be able to detect the level because you have such a variance of what liquids are in the tank. Uh, for us, we're going to put a very light float on the sensor. Uh, and the float's going to float on top of whatever may come into the tank. Uh, alkylation is a unique process within the refineries. Uh, this helps boost the octane rating of the gasoline. Uh, and within this process, uh, there's three liquids in the tank. And the two liquids they're mainly concerned with are both acids, and they're down inside the tank. Uh, 
So providing the, the first interface level isn't too difficult, but providing that secondary interface level uh, is basically impossible for all the other technologies. Uh, so with us being a float based, we weight the floats accordingly to the gravities or the densities of the liquids. Uh, the float goes through the different liquids and sits on them and provides a very accurate measurement. Uh, LPG, the propane butane. Uh, so this is going to be a pressurized tank. Uh, so having the ability to do temperature and having the ability to be accurate are key. Uh, but the other thing that the customers here really like is the fact that once we're installed in a tank, uh, if anything happens to the electronics, so let's say there's a lightning strike, uh, the electronics can be replaced without taking the tank back out of service. So we can do everything while leaving the, the pipe or the hose inside the tank. Oil lease tanks. Uh, so, the, as I mentioned earlier, these are the tanks out at the wellheads, uh, and this is taking the the mixture. So, usually, it's a mixture of oil, condensate, water uh, coming out of the well and being pumped into these tanks and getting separated out. So, here, uh, the accuracy is uh, not necessarily the biggest concern, but having the ability to do the level and the temperature and everything from one opening. And from the, the small openings that are typically on these tanks is a good benefit. And usually there's also what we call gun barrel tanks. So the oil is taken from the oil lease tanks and they're processed through the gun barrel tanks. And this is going to uh, act as a oil water separation system. Uh, so the oil goes one direction to get sold off and the water goes a separate direction uh, to get processed or to get returned into the ground to help force up more oil. And these tanks have a lot of vibration in them. Uh, the, the tanks themselves, you can actually feel the vibration, and then the stairs are vibrating as well. So it's a very harsh environment. Uh, for our sensors, the way the core technology works, uh, we're very immune to vibration or to shock and vibration. Uh, so it was a good application where we were able to go in and provide a, an accurate level measurement uh, in a difficult environment. And then we have some applications within the chemical industry. Uh, these are typically uh, storage tanks that are then used within different uh, processes or different reactors. Uh, so just some of the names of the different chemicals that we've been installed in. Uh, so hydrobromic, anhydrous hydrogen fluoride, sulfuric. And then we'll jump to the next slide. I have a few more. Uh, propylene, amine, butadiene, raffinate. Uh, and each one is a little bit different. Uh, some of these are very thick, uh, very difficult chemicals to measure. Um, some can be toxic, so we have to worry about any kind of admittance. Uh, so all these have different unique applications to each, each chemical in each tank. Uh, reactors, so here's where you're actually going to be forming or, or forming a new chemical or breaking down chemicals. Uh, this is typically done in what they call a reactor tank. Uh, so a lot of times here is where we deal with the foaming. So you have a mixer to help the process go along, and then the foam's generated. So being able to not be affected by the foam, <coughs> excuse me, or the, or the mixers are key benefit. Uh, so something that can really help out the customers providing a higher accuracy within that harsh environment. One of the newer applications for us is within the mining industry. Uh, so a froth flotation cell, and you can see from the pictures there, this cell, the froth, is foam, and you're generating the foam, which is the separation of the minerals from the, the liquid, which is called the pulp. Uh, it's a very, uh, I'll say, dirty environment. Uh, the, the froth or the foam clings to just about everything around the tank. So we came up with some new float designs to be able to measure the, the pulp level. Uh, without having interference from the frothing. Uh, the other one we have is solvent extraction. Uh, this is part of the chemical process uh, of removing the minerals uh, from the from the the liquids as they've gone through the different processes. Um, an overview is down there on the bottom right. Uh, so. If you've seen the old images where everyone used to pan through the, the dirt to find the, the minerals, that's not done anymore. Everything's done 
uh, basically using heavy machinery and, and using different chemical reactions. Uh, so for the solvent extraction, you have two different liquids in the tank, uh, and we're using the floats to measure the height of the two different liquids. Uh, and you can also end up with a very large emulsion layer. Uh, so if you've looked at oil and water, typically it's a very clean separation. Uh, for other interfaces between liquids, it's not a very clean separation. Uh, so for here, you want to control how big that emulsion layer becomes uh, because it's not helping the process. It's actually a sign that the process isn't running as effectively as it could. Uh, so we've had it where customers have put multiple floats on and measure the top and the bottom of that emulsion layer and then use that to help them control the process to get more efficiency out of the process. So being able to provide accuracy and being able to provide it, interface measurement was key for this application. Uh, milk is another one. Uh, so for here, this is part of the, uh, the pasteurization process and they have a, uh, what they call a balance tank, which is a large tank up above the process and they have to control the height and the balance tank to make sure that the pressure is correct throughout the rest of the process so that it's flowing through and everything's being done correctly. Uh, so with milk, part of the dairy industry, they're looking for that 3A rating, and then they were also looking for the high accuracy. Uh, now we'll run through some of these specifications, um, just highlighting a few things. So for the outputs, uh, for our standard level sensors, we have a four to 20 output. We can do one or two loops. Uh, both of those would, or the analog there, the four to 20 would come with hard. That's only on the first loop. Uh, we have a Modbus output. Uh, we have a DDA, which is an old proprietary output. And then for that high level switch, we have a digital IO output. If you're in need of hazardous area approvals, this is just a quick overview of what we have. So we have intrinsically safe and explosion proof approvals from most of the places around the world. Uh, we have our SIL2 capable sensor. This is just some of the information that would come if you're looking for a SIL rating. We have our different heights. So as I mentioned earlier, for the rigid pipes, we can go from 12 inches to 300 inches. For the flex, we're going to go from 120 to 866, and we're going to hold that inherent accuracy of one millimeter across everything. Looking here, we have our temperature rating. So for the electronics, we go from minus 40 to 71C. For the process, so for the pipe going in the tank, we can go from minus 40 to 125C. And then for our temperature measurement, if we're one of the digital sensors, we can go 1, 5, 12, or 16. Uh, we're accurate to 0.1 degrees C, and we're automatically going to calculate your average temperature based upon the position of the floats. If we're analog, with it being a loop power device, we can only do one sensor, and that one has an accuracy of 0.28 degrees C. Uh, pressure ratings, the rigid pipes are good for 1,000 PSI. The flex hose is good for 435. And then the floats are going to vary depending on the details of the float. For wetted parts, so for the refined me, the rigid pipe, we can do stainless, Hastel AC, or Teflon. For the sanitary so clean, we can do stainless or Hastel AC. For the chambered, we typically only do stainless because it's external from the process. And for the tank slayer and the level limit with the flexible hoses, we do just stainless. We have our display, so this is just part of every single sensor we sell now, uh, offering the ability to see the level, uh, see the temperature, and then we have some diagnostics in case there's any kind of fault. And we can take a look at the fault and help troubleshoot sensors uh, without having to uh, connect up to them directly. And then just for an overview of how the sensors are come together, uh, so we have our pipe with our float, and then we have different housings. And then within the electronics, we have, or sorry, within the housings, we have the electronics. Uh, so it's a fairly simple structure. Again, everything is field replaceable, so everything comes apart and can be changed. And then for installation, uh, we're going to install the top of the tank and go to the bottom. Uh, so this is the flexible sensor. Uh, we have different kinds of uh, connections. So typically we do a one inch adjustable NPT, which allows us to adjust the height of the sensor in the field. Uh, we do offer welded flanges. 
and then a choice of a hook, magnet, or weight to keep the hose nice and straight. Uh, most customers go with a weight. We have our uh, refine me. This is our rigid pipe, so very similar installation. Uh, big difference here is we're going to do a three-quarter inch adjustable fitting. And this is typically where we find the need for the welded flanges. Uh, these would be the ones going into the pressurized tanks, such as the LPG. Uh, and then here's the sanitary so clean. So you can see the pipe is a little bit different. We have different end plugs. Uh, we have different mounts. Typically, this is a tri clamp, which is a standard connection for the uh, sanitary industries. We have the chambered unit, uh, which is going external to a bypass chamber or a magnetic level gauge. Uh, we do not make them the magnetic level gauges. Uh, we work with a lot of the companies that do. Uh, so typically, this would be bought as a package from them, and we're selling and supplying to them so they can make sure everything fits together when it's purchased. This is the level limit, so very similar to the tank slayer and the refine me. Uh, the main difference is having that third float there that's held in place and having the ability to do a manual test of that high level switch. And then we have all kinds of accessories as far as floats, displays. Uh, we do custom weighting of the floats depending on the interface level that's needed. Uh, all kinds of different things to help provide a complete package. And then here's some of the upcoming webinars. Uh, so February 11th, high temp, high stakes, pressure pros for combustion monitoring. February 18th, go wireless, converting your existing vibration monitoring instrumentation. February 25th, breaking barriers, getting started with four to 20 milliamp vibration transmitters. And March 4th, ditch the service contract, on-site vibration analyzer calibration. All right, well, thank you everyone for, uh, for joining us and for attending the presentation today.